Hey, this is John. Let's Talk Native is now on Patreon. You can support the show by going to patreon.com slash let's talk native. We will be producing exclusive content for our Patreon supporters. Thanks for checking us out. Let's Talk Native is produced at the LTN Studios on the Cattaraugus territory of the Seneca Nation. We break all the rules for Native media by peeling back the layers of assimilation and indoctrination. No prayers, no buffalo speeches, and no spirituality shows. While this podcast does not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do take a tough look at history, oppression, and our survival. But the real goal here is to bring our people together by breaking down what separates us. So, welcome to Let's Talk Native with John Kane. Say hello and welcome to Let's Talk Native. I'm John Kane, and uh, my guest today is uh, Philip Yenyo, who is the executive director of AIM Ohio. Um, we we're going to talk a little bit about what Cleveland has done with its baseball team um, and some of the waves that are caused by that and some of the stuff that we still have to watchdog on this stuff. So let me go ahead and introduce uh, uh, Philip Yenyo. Uh, thank you for joining me on my program. Well, thank you very much for uh, having me. I've listened to your show quite often. Well, and I follow some of the work that you guys have done. Obviously, the, the Cleveland thing is uh, with the, with their baseball team has been a point of contention for decades. And look, there have been a lot of people over the years who have weighed in. Some right there in Cleveland, and 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 others. Uh, you know, as we as we take this this battle um, nationally, whether it's with Washington and their football team, or Cleveland and their baseball team, or Atlanta with their baseball team, uh, Chicago and their hockey team, and taking it at the local level with high schools. And, and of course, this all was fought strongly uh, at the college level as well. So we, we all are kind of on the same team when it comes to, uh, is that a sports analogy? We're all on the same side um, when it yeah. comes to, uh, to this, this mascot issue. Um, but it's, look, we'll take the wins when we get them. Um, I know on Sunday is when news first came out um, that Cleveland was going to, retire its its name they've already kind of somewhat sidelined and i and i gotta say it with a certain amount of caution they've sidelined their you know their you know logo that has been such a point of contention their their cartoon you know uh, ghoulish looking you know chief wahoo uh, they, they've already kind of sidelined that a little bit when it comes to uniforms and hats although the merchandise is still available um and after what Washington did with retiring its name and logo, I think there were, there was probably additional pressure on Cleveland to to take the next step here. You know, give me your assessment on on the news as it as it broke and and where you think it is right now. I think with um, with the untimely passing of George Floyd and this whole movement about. Um, you know, social injustice and systemic racism. This is what kicked it off. Right. Um, and, and it was the same thing that happened in in the 60s, too, with the civil rights movement. And then uh, Black Panther Party started and uh, the American Indian Movement started shortly after that. Um, so, uh, you know, it was a, a very similar situation. I think when they um, when they when Washington announced it, um of course, Cleveland had to announce it. Um, they, I think they felt pressured, not so much from corporate as they did with, with uh, wanting to speak out on social injustice, but then looked at their name and figured, well, you know, how is this going to look? You know, we need to do something. Um, well, so and, and I think and that's I think, where I think they Washington, got their cue. I think Washington clearly was pressured into it because of financial interests of so FedEx. Yeah, they, and they Nike. went kicking and screaming. <laughs> yeah, they, they did not. I mean, look, Dan Snyder, the owner of the team, said he's never going to change the name. You can put that in caps. Um, and, you know, so there was no question that Washington wanted to dig in. 
But as we always say, never say never. Because when you when you realize that you don't control your own destiny oftentimes, especially when you're when you are, you know, look, when you, when you are one of these, you know, corporate hacks, uh, you are even if you own your company outright, there, the pressures that can come to bear because of, um, you know, not just sponsors, but, you know, vendors and, and that and the like. So I think Washington clearly had to respond not out of any kind of moral obligation but uh, but more so because of the financial interest i got the sense that in cleveland the the social pressures were were probably a little weightier to them than just the financial pressures do you think that's accurate yeah i i do believe that's an accurate statement um yeah i i really like the fact that they said that they were going to reach out to us uh, to the local community. And that means a lot because we had been praying for that day to happen, uh, for a very long time. And I've, I've called on it and in, in, uh, to happen in different interviews that I've done over the years. And it, it finally came, came to pass. Um, I think with Cleveland, the process that they took is quite a bit different. I mean, they wanted our input. They wanted to learn. And that was the feeling that I got when the American Indian Movement of Ohio uh, met with them. Mm -hmm. They were genuine. They were serious about this. Now, it, it and, does appear... And not to put them on a pedestal, but, you know, it, it, it did have um, meaning to us that they were serious about it. Mm -hmm. Now, it does appear that for a period of time, and I don't know if this is just about clearing out inventory or um, kind of transitioning to whatever they choose for a new name, but they're going to sell merchandise. But they've said that they're going to commit, you know, I'm not saying how, what percentage of the proceeds, but they're going to commit proceeds from those sales to the native community. And I assume it's going to come to, you know, to, to you know, some of the, the native programs that exist there locally. So even that, I mean, and look, there's some people that are going to say, well, that's just so they can keep selling that stuff. Um, so, you know, and, and I'm as skeptical or cynical as the next person, but it does sound like, you know, whether, again, whether it's liquidating existing inventory or, you know, or commitments in production, perhaps production commitments that they're going to continue to sell Indians and maybe even some Wahoo stuff still, but um, but they're going to turn around and use some of the proceeds of that to uh, you know to donate it to to native causes. Is that is that your understanding? Um, that's the understanding that I have now. Okay. Um, I I know this for our community, at least for our our organization, the way uh, Vernon Belcourt taught us because of a situation that happened here years ago with a, a lawsuit that Russell Means brought against them. Um, uh, Vernon was very upset that Russell did that and took money. Yeah. Um, and I was taught by him to never bring a lawsuit against them and never accept any money from them mm -hmm. because that's blood money. Right. And no matter what good you do with that money, that's going to be tainted. And I made mention of this to somebody else in the community the other day. And I'm like, you know, don't think that the, you know, the ancestors are watching what we're doing. Don't think that there won't be repercussions. Yeah. You know, I mean, we have to clearly, keep in mind that clearly there's a know, certain level of, uh, you know, of, you know, obviously coercion that comes around, comes along with dollars. Washington tried to do that when they set up a foundation, they thought they could buy their way through this thing. So <laughs> I, I, again, I'm, I'm a little indifferent about, uh, you know, look, if you're going to, if you're going to, stop something just stop it now and i don't know if they're going to play through the this next 20 you know 2021 season um as the the cleveland indians and then retired after that the the news is a little sketchy because this, this the reports that came out were a little bit contradictory and even some of this idea of, of continuing to sell merchandise um it, it does obviously it leaves a bad taste uh, what i will say is Knowing that they've made a commitment, and now that all the news that's come out after that, they're, they're not going to back out of this thing. They're, there's no way they're going to, you know, even if yeah, I don't, th I don't think they are. They're too committed to it. Yeah, the, the way that they they presented themselves in the meeting, they're too committed to this to back out. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, as far as um, you know, the time frame, um, 
I understand there's a process. I was trained as a, as a commercial artist. You know, I went through vocational commercial art and then took up commercial art in college. And I understand there's a process. The, it, it can't happen overnight. It takes time. You know, whatever they decide to do with either changing colors, uh, logo designs, all this stuff takes time. And even a, a two-year time frame is a very short window. Normally, you know, doing corporate logos and, and design and stuff like that, it it it'll, it can take up to five years. Well, there's also so copyright and, and, and uh, um, yes. you know, permissions. And that, I mean, that's why Washington, they just dropped the name without replacement name. I mean, <laughs> think about what Washington right. did. They were under such pressure. They just stripped away a name and, and just called themselves the football team um, because they were having trouble probably with some legal clearances and stuff like that on uh, either on a name or, or whatever. So there is some of that. And, and, and I'm, I agree with you. I, I get that. Um, I think you, you hope it doesn't get dragged out too long. I do. I will say this, and this is another issue that comes up oftentimes. Um, um, COVID-19. Um, yeah. I, I understand you you have a son that's, that's actually tested positive. Yeah. I was on my way home from Florida from doing a, a painting job and, um, his mom called me and told me because I was supposed to have him this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then over the holiday weekend, every other year, I get him the week between Christmas and, sure. and uh, new year's. And, and that's now. That's so how's, how's he doing? First up, before I talk about anything else, let's talk about what's important. How, how's he doing? He's, he's doing good. You know, when I spoke to him on the phone, he was, hi dad, I love you. I miss you. And you know, he was, his spirits are up. Okay. Good. Um, and his fever is down, so um, and he's he's not coughing or anything. But they want him, you know, fourteen day quarantine. And he was the school had um, it was a hybrid program where he was there at school two mm -hmm. days a week, and then because of his mom's work, you know, she she works during the day. He was at a a, a church as a daycare center mm -hmm. and doing his distance learning there. Oh yeah. Well, uh, again, my I'm, uh, I wish my best. I uh, wish the best for him. Um, but the reason I was bringing up COVID um, is is because some people would suggest that oh this is a terrible time to do this kind of thing and and I'm saying no I think it's I think it's the right time I think if you when you consider all the other things and I think part of Washington's decision to move quickly was the sooner they can get out of this in an already you know kind of screwed up year for sports I mean look you don't have fans you don't have merchandise sales you don't and and you're not going to have any of the, the, you know, that retribution or, you know, or, you know, uh, fallout from, from changing a logo because you don't have, you know, tens of thousands of people gathering. I think actually COVID-19 and how it's impacted professional sports or and sports in general, I mean, even, even at the high school level, I think it makes, uh, I, I think the timing to do it now while things are under somewhat of a pause, uh, you know, I think it, it, I think it coincided, uh, in such a way, I'm not trying to make an upside to COVID-19, but but if you're going to have to make a change, when when fans are really concerned about whether they're even going to have a season or not, I think right. whether whether a team has to change its name and logo becomes secondary to the survival of, of professional sports and 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 the fans and you know the fanaticism that goes with that. And at the same time, you know, they don't have counter demonstrations yeah, going well, on. There you go. Like there they did, go. like they did when when they retired uh, Chief Wahoo. Um, you know, we still had our our annual conference on racism in sports and media, and and the uh, the um, annual opening day mm -hmm. demonstration. Right. Um, and right away there was, there was another group that came out and it was funny because we, we still had a, a decent number of people coming out, you know, people work, they can't make to make it to the demonstration and that, but they only had three people <laughs> yeah. that showed up. So you, you could see, you know, how much it, it really mattered to them. Right. Um, well, there's somebody. That, let's let's be honest. There are some people that lose their minds over this stuff, and we. See, oh my God, it's crazy. We see it at the high the school level. Threats. We see it at the at the you know. Yeah. Obviously, the University of Illinois is still battling. You know, them retiring their 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 chief logo and Illinois uh, um logo. I mean, and it's still. I mean, it is. It's it. It's crazy how some people can can become so impassioned. And and I, and I'll say this. There is no other use or, or, or <laughs> I, I, 
there's no there there are no no other mascots that e evoke this kind of emotion. I mean, you never hear anybody talking about lions this way or tigers or eagles or. or, or I mean, not. I mean, I'm not saying that that fans of of these other organizations can't be just as nutty, but not with this impassioned obsession with with the logo itself. Correct. I mean, and that says something. That says something that there's there, because because it becomes almost this theft of identity to such an extent because nobody runs around saying that they're an eagle, right? I mean, nobody runs around saying that they're, you know, a cub. They they but they but the idea that you can have people of all different, you know, races, ethnicities, backgrounds claiming to be a redskin or claiming to be an Indian. I mean, is uh I mean, yeah. and that's that's what I'm seeing with some of this the work that I'm doing with high schools as well. But th this obsession is is almost unique to the use of native mascots. Yeah, and, and the the funny thing too is, you know, you you do get those outliers that that, you know, claim to be native and it's like, "Okay, well, w what people claim you? You're claiming this, but do they claim you?" Well, well but he, even and, most of and, those people, I mean, I, I did a whole show a couple of weeks back where uh, there was, I called it apples, wannabes and pretendians. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and look, I got some people pissed off. I mean, but you, 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 you have to confront some of this. And look, I understand there are native people that have completely become completely assimilated and they've made their lives that way. I mean, there's the big question mark about Deb Haaland becoming the interior, uh, you know, secretary. Uh, you, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not as big a fan over native people running for office. I feel like we lose them when, when they go there. I mean, I think, I feel like they took the other side and look, I hope Deb Haaland, Haaland does some great work. And and as a congressman, her and Sharice Davids or any any anybody else, I would like to think that they're going to, you know, perhaps in, in as they're as they're doing their work for their constituency, which is predominantly not native, you hope that they're going to give some extra consideration. But I'm not saying that that we need to join, you know, this is you know, join the you know the other side just to to try to fix it from within. I would rather have people within the state government, within federal government, that regardless of what their skin color is, will hear us, and and that our strongest native voices are still on our side, not having right. run for for office. And so you know, and and I say that. Because I don't want to make it sound like this use of the word apple. Um, you know, obviously, it, it is meant to be insulting. But, but, the, but, the, but the reality is we have many Native people who have lost so much of their, their identity that really all that's left is, is their skin. You know, they're, they're, they're Christians, they're veterans, they're, they're Democrats, they're Republicans, they, they you know, they, they belong to the Moose Lodge and they belong, you know, so all of this stuff, you know what I mean? And, and I'm, and yeah, I'm not condemning exactly. it all. I'm just saying that these are some of this, some of the assimilation that are, that our people experience. So and it, when we, when we have those people, I mean, not just the pretendians and the wannabes, but when we have these, at, the, the, these guys who, who invariably will side with white people on every native issue, that's problematic. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think too, you know, um, getting involved in their politics, as I, I like to say, you know, it, it validates their um, the colonialism, their, their invalid <laughs> government. Yeah, yeah, no, the, it, does. It, it validates their in, their their invalid government. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. Hey, they 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 came here. This is a colonialistic system, and and they basically you know stole the land from us. So we have an invading uh, uh, occupation of our homelands. And an invading government that's trying to rule over us, and then and we should be playing to a, part of that. And then take it to another level with this whole thing of mascots and so much. Then they try to steal the identity too. I mean, yeah. so yeah, and then they, they bring injury, up right? these Halloween, yeah, these Halloween costumes and and all this other stuff, and they, they call them costumes, and you know they're they're not costumes. You keep trying to tell people, and they they can't get it through their head. Well, you have Hollywood, it, you have Hollywood, you have you have Disney, you have yep. all of these forms of entertainment that that exploit um, you know native native people, native imagery as well. Well, not only that, it's the not telling the truth in education, not teaching the truth. They're constantly being our children are constantly being taught uh, lies. 
and and I brought this up with the the Ohio Department of Education when it when I was talking to them about this mascot issue and Anderson School District, and and I, I said you know a lot of the, this problem comes from you guys because you're not teaching truth in history. You're still teaching these fantasy stories about Pocahontas and about uh, Thanksgiving and Christopher Columbus and and you're not teaching people the truth. You're well, not and, teaching the children the truth. So they they think these stereotypes of us are normal, are real, and they're not. Well, or or the words that they use. You know, so you know, look, I've ar- I've argued with people who claim to be native who want to say, oh, the w- red skin isn't derogatory. Well, it certainly is. I mean, no matter. I mean, look, there's there may be several, you know. Um, etymologies of the word but one of them clearly is associated with, with taking our scalps so there's yeah. no question about that this is another place that i um that i have issue with russell means russell means was one of the guys who was advocating this whole idea that the word indian comes from um columbus referring to us as godlike in spanish uh, saying indios and it's simply not true that whole russell means story and he's not the only one who used to say it but that's wrong here's here's the bottom line the word indians and indios comes from Columbus believing he had reached the East Indies. Yeah. Not not India. I mean, I was all oh, India didn't even exist in 1492. Well No, it was it, Hindustan. <laughs> but 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 white people, Europeans were still referring that to that area, um, which would be east of the Indus River as the region of, of India. That's what I mean that they didn't call it that. The the, the um it, India wasn't a country, but but in fact, even East Indies isn't something that the local people referred to them as, themselves as, but Europeans did. So when Columbus was was sailing, you know, believing he could go west to go east, uh, which you can if you go far enough, and there isn't a continent and, and um, multiple oceans in the way, um, yeah. and he lands on these islands, he believed he had reached the easternmost islands of the Indies, of, of, of Indonesia. And that's why he called the people there Indians, Indios, not because he was making some sort of God reference. I mean, and how do we know this? Because he wrote this stuff down in his journal. So today, when we're battling, whether I'm doing this at my old high school, which calls themselves the Indians, or whether we're dealing with this with Cleveland and a baseball team, the word is wrong. It's a misnomer. It's a mistake. 500 years, and it's stuck because... You know, people love to just lump us all together in, in with one word that doesn't fit all. Uh, and in fact, doesn't fit any of us. And today, an Indian is a person from India, and that's just you know that's that's what it is. The fact that the, that there's still this effort, and if you look around the country, where you see native um, um, nations that may have had the word Indian in their name, many of them have bailed on it. Um, the Seneca Nation doesn't call themselves the Seneca Nation of Indians anymore. They're they're phasing that the use of that out. The Oneida Indian Nation of New York they just got rid of. The, now they're just the Oneida Nation, and so th- we not only it, would it be redundant if it were even an accurate word, but it's it's not an accurate word. So many native territories. I mean, look, we we've come to own some of our own language. I mean, uh, the Lakota. The fact that they've been were, ta- were called the Sioux, which is a derogatory word in in of itself, right? We're we're trying. We today ha- have become empowered enough to make the right adjustments on vernacular, on language, on, on on our own identity. And what we run, the wall that we run into, is against government. It's against it's against the, the non native public, Hollywood, Disney. Um, and and pro sports that, that want to continue to use not just names and images, but, uh, you know, but they want to keep they want to keep this identity that they've taken and and, uh, and and hold on to it and and cry like hell if they feel like we're taking it from them. Yeah. And it, it's uh, and that, too, you know, it's so ingrained in them. The stereotypes are so ingrained in them. And they say, well, you know, this is our history. No, it's. Oh, they, well, they throw words like history, tradition and history and all that yeah, stuff in there. It's it, wrong. Well, your tradition and your history is based on on uh, a myth. <laughs> white supremacy. Yeah, well, that's a myth. <laughs> and, and they're, they're like, what, what? I'm not a white supremacist. And when you talk to people of color about it, they're like, what do you mean white supremacy? I'm, I'm not white. Well, well, then why are you acting like them? Well, and, but here's you know? the bottom line. <laughs> Those who have the power to name a high school 
or name a, a you know a college or name a, a professional team, they're white. So if yeah. you buy into that, I don't care what color you are, you're supporting this the, the white privilege that established those names in the first place. So right. So if you're if you're a fan and you're <laughs> of a sports organization, whether you're you're black, whether you're native, whether you're white, no matter what you are, you're still supporting that privilege that they took in the first place to to appropriate those names. So yeah, it, it, it you know the word racism gets thrown in. I, I refer to these mascots as race based mascots, and right away somebody's oh there you got to throw the race word in. This look, that's what it is. You can we can have a discussion on how racist the practice is, but I mean, and I'm not saying the word Indian is racist. It's just wrong. But the idea of of taking a native identity. And uh, for something that's not native and, and, and owning it and trying to own it and, and, you know, copyright it, make money off it for your, your amusement and entertainment. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, I think this is, this is the debate that we're having. Um, it's, it is a national debate because there are not just professional teams, but look, there's high schools all across the, I, mean, I think there's still like 2,200, over, over 2,000 high schools in the United States that still have some variation of a, of a native mascot, whether it's, you know, whether it's a derogatory slur like Redskins or uh, a misnomer like Indians or whether it's in, in individual names of, of nations. I mean, I'm, I got a, uh, a school out in Massachusetts, uh, um, they call them their mill. Uh, the town is Millis, and they they call them the Millis Mohawks. On their gym floor, it says Mohawk territory. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to claim it then. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> but, but so, so this is, you know, so so this is a national debate. Uh, but you know, look, we have had our struggles over environmental issues, over land claims issues. This is actually one of them that we're kind of winning. And it, and it does matter. And the reason it matters is because we have to stop. At some point, we got to draw a line in the stand and not let generation after generation believe that this is okay. And, you know, I noticed too, you know, we've been trying to educate people with uh, the ASA study and all these other studies that were done long before uh, Stephanie Freiberg came mm -hmm. out with her study. Um, <laughs> and, people just don't want to believe it i mean it's well they, researched they, yeah it's been very well researched and not only how it affects uh indigenous people themselves but how it also affects the community at large that even the non-natives well um, and, and, and in many ways almost especially them because it engrades a certain amount of privilege it, uh fetishizing native people look we're, we're gonna mm -hmm. take a, we're gonna take a break here and uh and but i want to go into this a little bit more because i don't think people understand the far-reaching effects that this has and 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 you know folks like stephanie freiberg <laughs> and and others you know child development experts uh psychologists have studied this and we'll talk about that when we come back let's take a, a brief break and, and we'll uh we'll come right back in just a few this is john kane with my guest uh uh, Philip Yenyo, and uh, we'll be right back in just a moment. All right. Thanks for coming back. This is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. And my guest is Philip Yanyo, who is the executive director uh, of AIM Ohio, the American Indian Movement in Ohio. Um, you guys have kind of been the, uh, you know, the, as I said, the tip of the sword. Or, or should, do I have to say spear? No, I'm not going to go there. But you, you guys <laughs> have kind of been the, the tip of the sword on this battle with, Cle with the Cleveland baseball team for decades. Yes, um, probably about six decades now. Um, it, it started out when Russell Means came here, um, and he went he, he went right after the baseball team. Well, and, and, um, and I don't always want to come across as being critical of Russell. Oh no, I'm I'm pretty critical of Russell myself. <laughs> I mean, he's done some good work, but there's there's also look the, when you become a personality and you become you know you know like bigger than yourself. Um, there's a lot of things that that go wrong, and and, and look, and we see this you know, with people who become celebrities and, uh, and, you know, so without, you know, 
I, I credit Russell with with the good work he does, but I'm I'm not afraid to condemn him for the bad stuff. But we're not going to do that here on this show. <laughs> but yeah, he he came here and he started started the movement here, and then went to Washington. Um, and I've had people tell me, well, Washington was to, yeah, but it started here. Yeah, you know, we we need to recognize exactly where it all started. Um, but you, you mean, when you, you know, say Washington, the, uh, you mean the Washington football team, uh, yes. yeah. well, and, yeah. and you're right. When you, when you start talking about five or six decades here, you know, we always hear people say, so when did this become an issue? You know, how come we never heard this before? Look, our voices have been out there. They've been out there for, like I said, 50, 60 years in, and, and in a lot of places, not just in, in Washington because of the football team or in Cleveland because of the baseball team. We have been making noise about some of this stuff and this mischaracterization for, again, for, for over half a century. The well, fact here in that, Cleveland. But the fact that, <laughs> I just want to say, but the fact that, that white people haven't heard us uh, it's mostly because we haven't been able to you know, uh, pierce the, the, the veil of mainstream media. It's been hard to, to be heard. You know, and, and I do want to go back to something you said at the top of the show. There is no question that the United States is undergoing um, a, a period of time where there's a reckoning on social justice, on racial equity, um, police violence. And, and, and look, we've been seeing it for 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 a time, I mean, and, and George, the murder, and I'll call it the murder of George Floyd and the murder of Breonna Taylor, you know, just added to, you know, Eric Garner and, you know, Freddie Gray and, and Michael Brown and, uh, you know, Sandra Bland. It just it just kept adding up and it reached a, a, a point. You know, obviously you, you have Colin Kaepernick and, and, you know, his treatment by the NFL for taking a knee you know, uh, during the national anthem, all of this just culminates to, to what happened this year. Um, and, yeah. and again, I think just like to a certain extent, just like with Eric Garner, the, the idea of watching a slow murder take place with, uh, with George Floyd, I think it, it shook, it shook white people who could, could ignore it before. I think it gets to a point where, where it no longer could be ignored. And, and so it took some of the allies that we have in this battle who may have not been allies 10 years ago or 20 years ago, who finally said, yeah, enough is enough. And look, we spilled out into the streets. We, you know, and, and we raised hell. And so because of that, there has been a reckoning here, and I think that's why Washington was pressured to change. And and frankly, I think this added to the pressure that would have have Cleveland uh, make the change. And but again, I don't I don't want to downplay the fact that this has gone on for sixty years in places like Cleveland. Yeah, and you know it's been a struggle. It, it has truly been a struggle to get people to listen to us. <laughs> um, when you have when when you have people saying you know this is it's always been like this oh it was named after Louis Sacalexis and you then you hit them with the the facts that That's it wasn't it. yeah they you know, say they're like, no, they, they don't want to hear it they want to say you know a native coach by the name of Lone Star Deeds who wasn't even native I mean they just na- made that crap up so yeah they try yeah. to hit you with this with this with this made up history and and you're and when you say it's been tough let's be clear. There have been confrontations over this. People get abused for for. Oh yeah. So when you step up and you raise your voice and look, you know I'm I'm getting 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 trashed pretty good in my old hometown high uh, high school um, by the people who want to keep their mascot because I because I raise the issue and my argument is compelling. Theirs isn't, so they take the cheap shot. So so we as the individuals who step out on the front line, we place ourselves in harm's way. And and there is harm that comes with it. Yeah, there's a lot of harm, uh, death threats, yep. uh, and ridicule from your own family. I, re- I remember going to, to a family reunion and one of my cousins said, oh, we saw you on the news the other day, Chief Wahoo. <laughs> and it's like, you don't want to go to you know yep. family reunions and stuff. And it's like, well, why should I? You know, I'm doing something that matters to human beings and I'm being ridiculed by my, some of my own family members. And it's like, you're kidding me. You're, you're actually buying into this garbage. Um, it, it's, it's maddening the death threats that I've gotten, uh, even before Facebook started, you know, I would get, get emails and, or somebody had figure out what my phone number was and I'm getting phone calls and, uh, even the one year at at uh, 
the ballpark, standing right in front of a police officer. Eight o'clock in the morning, this guy's drunk and stumbling, and he kind of gets right in my face in front of this police officer who says, I'm going to kill you. And and I looked at the officer. I'm like, he just threatened my life. I want him arrested. And the cop laughed at me and walked away. And didn't and you? There was an incident a couple of years ago. I think it was one of the opening day uh, uh, um, demonstrations where a child was uh, was harassed by somebody. And that guy turned out later. Didn't didn't he make a come a come up uh, come forward with an apology and the whole bit? I mean, that was kind of an interesting. Uh, I, I I think so. I'm not sure which because yeah. there's two different demonstrations that go on on that. But there was also uh, one of our members who's um, who's. Uh, I believe he said he's Catawba mm -hmm. and Seneca. Uh, Robert Rice, you know Robert. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know no, Robert. Robert was Robert was attacked. Yeah. I had that all on video that I posted on our page, of this guy just came up and woo -woo -woo in his face, and Robert was on, on um, Facebook Live, mm -hmm. and I and he said I just Facebook Lived you, and the guy took a swing at him. Robert's quick. He he backed off away from the guy and and didn't get hit. But right away, you know, the police that stand around there, I said that that guy right there just took a swing at one of our demonstrators. They were on him. Well, thanks for bringing up Robert's name because he is he is one of the, you know, like like yourself. He's one of the guys who's been been out there on, on the front lines for a while. Um, but, you know, the other thing is, is when you talk about us doing something that matters, I'll get back to what we were talking about before the break. Um, you know, for, for those who say, aren't there more important issues? And I'm not going to prioritize whether saving the planet, you know, from a pipeline or defending missing and murdered indigenous women or, or our children. I'm not going to get into into trying to to rank the causes that many of us fight for. But I don't want this one to be minimized because it does affect native kids and and, and, it, and affects non-native kids because you have generation after generation that grows up with this idea of fetishizing native people. You know, I, I brought this up when I was, you know, back at my old high school in Cambridge, New York. I said, look, three, you know, one out of every three native women will be raped in her lifetime. You know, more than half of them will have experienced some level of sexual assault. You cannot disconnect that from the fetishizing of native people and the fetishizing of native women in particular. And, and, and while this may not be a big thing um, with, with the Cleveland baseball team, much of these, um, many of these, of these mascots, and this is even more so tied to the uber masculinity of, of football where, you know, where you've got, you know, cheerleaders that are, you know, you know, are, are scantily clad and, and they, are dressing up as as little in their little polka hottie, uh, you know, costumes. So there's there's a lot of that that plays into this thing. So when native people are abused, it, it, a part of it is we've already been reduced you know, and dehumanized because of mascots, or in the case of women, dehumanized and objectified because of mascots. So what we're doing is important here, and I don't want people to to, to downplay the significance of opposing native mascots. And I, I think that the well, just one quick thing too. A uh, number of years ago, there was somebody that, uh, in the area that came out with uh, Princess Walu, you know, because well, there's a chief, but there's no princess, and and was marketing those designs. But you know, the the other thing is, and I've always stated this when giving talks too, is that you cannot say that this. You know, when especially when people say, well, don't you have bigger issues? You got problems with alcohol and drug abuse and this and that. Well, you know what? There are certain issues, certain things that are root causes of those other issues. Everything seems to be somewhat it, connected. And, yep. and and this is what what they don't get is that when you and just like during Nazi Germany, dehumanizing Jewish people to the level of a cartoon uh, that's what's been done to us. You dehumanize us to a level of being just a cartoon, and then what ends up happening to the the person that that this affects is they lose their self worth, their, their self esteem, their community self worth, and a lot of times what happens, and I'm speaking from experience, is you want to numb yourself from this. So that's where the drugs and alcohol come in. And then that that's what that problem's from. And then when you can't 
numb yourself anymore, then you have another situation that comes into play, which is another big issue in, in Indian country, and that's suicide rates. Well, and, and let's not, uh, you know, ignore the fact that there's a close connection between alcohol consumption and, and sports especially professional yeah. sports. I mean, the official beer of the Cleveland Indians. I mean, l- look, we, we see it all the time. And 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 the, you you talked about, you know, somebody on their way into a baseball game. It might be worse with football, but this idea of getting sloppy drunk a, a, as a fan, you know, when you add that, look, you you add a, a native mascot to that, and then it becomes even more derogatory and more insulting. Right. And it's uh and and you know, I was talking about the you know the official beer of Budweiser is definitely guilty of this. I mean, everywhere you and and all the, the these um uh, these famous chefs in the area, uh, uh, different restaurants in the area, they're all making money off of this, and they don't see it. Yeah, you are making money off of racism. You, yeah. We're the oh the official window company of the Cleveland Indians, or. Yeah, yeah, and it just goes on and on. Yeah, the official yeah. sponsor of, yep. and they're all making money off of it. Sure, and you you try to tell them. It, we've even gone so far as to go after progressive uh, insurance. The, racism is not progressive. <laughs> well, I, I, I would, I would like. I there? would love to think that if if progressive is still sponsoring their, uh, you know, their venue. I would like to you know, hear you know did, did progressive step up at all in this in this debate? I mean, I know we, we know that financial financial interests affected what was happening with with Washington, but did progressive ever come out with a statement? Not that I am aware of. Hmm. Yeah. Not that I am aware of. And I, you know, and I'm not I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying to give them props, but you know, then, then shame on them. Shame on them for for not weighing in. Because again, if you look at the the handwriting on the wall. How would progressive not realize that that they could look they could have stood on the right side of this thing before the change? Now if they do it, it's just going to look stupid on them. I don't even think some of the banks like Key Bank here. I know when 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 um, the demonstrations were going on um, for the Keystone XL and Dakota Access, mm-hmm. um, I pulled my money out of the bank. No, no, and and I told them they're like, well, why why are you doing? And I told them I said. Defund you guys. You guys are paying for these these uh, pipelines to go in, helping to, to finance them. And on top of that, you you have your advertisements in that ballpark. Right. Well, oh, I'm, not, I'm I, not funding you. We I'm vote, sorry. We, we can vote vote with our dollars, even if we don't vote in in their political system. As right. consumers of of anything from entertain entertainment to financial instruments, you know, we we do need to do more of that. And I and I think we need to speak out. We need to boycott, defund, you know, um, all all of that. And um and I think it's I think that's an important strategy. But again, I I'll get back to the fact that that we're we're finally being heard. I mean, and and I think people may not like what they hear out of us. I mean, they always like it when we, when we talk about, you know, ceremony or powwows or, or, you know, spirituality, they don't like it so much when we talk about, no, we're not gonna let you put a pipeline through our lands. So we don't, they yeah. don't like it when we say, no, we oppose your, your uh, exploitation of our imagery for your, for your sports team. You know, it, there's, it, there's like, the, there's the good Indian, right? And, and then there's yeah. the, then there's the one that, you know, then there's the, you know, the, the troublesome ones and uh, you know, uh, we're the troublesome ones. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're the ones that speak out for justice. Right, right, and, and and that's that's how we're seen. Right. You know. Let me let me take this to the to the next level here because as much as I think it's important to go after the big dogs, the Washington football team and the Cleveland baseball team, and keeping the pressure. You know, I don't want to I don't want to belabor um, the the te- the teams that are still digging in, like the you know the, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Atlanta Braves or the Chicago Blackhawks. But, you know, I think their time is, is coming. But I, I think for me, and the bigger issue is, is you know, 2,200 high schools throughout, throughout the United States. And, and 200 here in Ohio. Well, and, and that's where I wanted to go. I, I wanted to see how much you're, how are you capitalizing on this um, to give a bigger push? And, and we're seeing a lot, of, a lot of schools under the same pressure because of social justice calls and, uh, you know, and so, uh, racial equity calls. But um, when we see the big dogs like, like you know, Cleveland and, and Washington, 
uh, ditching their native mascots. Uh, how much is that this helping you, or how much is it um, uh, increased the number of calls that you're getting from high schools to come out and talk to them? Yeah, it's it has increased definitely. You know, and and Vernon always told us, you know, the reason why we're not focusing on the colleges and the the uh, high schools right now is because because uh, once you get one of these big guys to fall. When are these big dogs to fall? The rest are going to be like dominoes. And that's exactly what happened. When Cleveland announced it, I got a phone call from uh, Parma, uh, Parma School District from their Alumni Association. Yeah. Um, and Parma is, is part of Cuyahoga County. It's just south of Cleveland. Yep. Um, and then Copley. Uh, over by Akron area, you know, they contacted us. And, uh, of course, Anderson School District, they just changed. They didn't even contact us because for years they've been, uh, you know, having this debate. And, mm -hmm. and you know, people talk about how much money it takes for, for them to, to change and rebrand. Well, Adidas has, had come out years ago and said that they would help yeah, they had a whole program, yeah. defray the costs. And nobody took them up on it. So, you know, they, they really don't have an argument. Well, they and, really and, and don't honestly, have an argument. You know, just like we, we talk about the time it takes to phase, you know, to transition for, for the Cleveland baseball team, high schools, <clears throat> they can go through their normal process of, you know, changing uniforms as they need to be changed, changing banners as they need to be changed. If you need to, you know, you know strip a gym floor, you got to do that on occasion. So, I mean, nobody is saying to a high school, you need ma to make this decision today and then strike every image, you know, every trophy, every display case. No, nobody's saying that. You know, you, you do away with it. You, you introduce a, a new mascot if it's even necessary, which I'm not even convinced it is. Um, but but, you know, when people try to make that that financial argument, you're right. There there have been you know, companies like Adidas, I think even Nike stepped up at some point, but there have been, you know, some of the nations uh, that, that have, you know, um, gaming enterprises have thrown money in, uh, you know, at schools to help with their, their transition. And you know what, if, if you've got to do a different, a different level of, of sports booster work to, you know, to help, then, you know, you know, use GoFundMe. There's all the, the thousands of people that are willing to sign, uh, sign a petition you know, to uh, a change.org petition, those, some of those same people will, will throw five or 10 bucks at a, uh, at a school that's, that might be struggling because of, you know, perhaps COVID-19 and, and their sports programs. Look, I'll, I'll throw some money at a team that's transitioning, you know, from their uh, changing the name. Yeah. We, we've even had, I've been contacted by uh, some alumni from Wampa Canetta, Ohio, and uh, and and they're fighting it. They, these guys are are really digging their heels in too. But you know, Wampa Canada, that's that's the area that Tecumseh was in. You know, mm -hmm. um, and you know, for and, and I've heard Chief Ben Barnes talk about some of the things that are are still going on there. You know, this is just a people think that that this is this fight is over, and it's not not by a long shot. This, like you said, it, it, this is the tip of the iceberg here. Our work's not over. And I've had people, hey, congratulations, great work. And, and I said, very humbly speaking, I, I thank you for the acknowledgement. But, you know, it's not just me. It's, well, it's the generations that came before us that stood in, on the front line with boots on the ground, speaking out against this, you know, it's, it's the people it, like Susan Harjo, uh, uh, Amanda Blackhorse and all these others that, that, and, and believe me, um, Amanda's younger than I am. I was, you know, when I felt like just giving up, you know, I saw what she was doing and that inspired me to, to see young people doing these things. And, and it sp inspired me to keep going keep fighting well and, and and, and I, you know uh, to your point this isn't just about you know getting rid of native mascots i mean part of the reason we're doing it is to is to try to correct the historical record well that doesn't just get fixed when you when you remove a mascot we still have the work to do you know I, i've heard some people say well if you take away the native mascots how is anybody gonna learn anything about native people well for one thing you don't learn about native people because of chief wahoo you know, right. or, you know, or, or anybody else. So, I mean, it's an absurd argument. But the point that I make with a lot of these high schools, especially when you have a high school. Now, you've in, you, you've brought in this native stereotypes, which are wrong anyway, into 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 your an atmosphere that's supposed to be teaching kids. 
I don't know any school that has ever said, all right, we've got a native mascot, so we're going to we're going to actually uh, add to our history or our social studies curriculum more um, learning and more teaching about the native people. Of this area. They never do that. And, and in fact, when when you think about words like the, like the Indians, you know, I go back to my, my high school in Cambridge, New York, and I said, you don't even know what Indians you're talking about. I mean, you don't even know what who the native people were that were indigenous to this land. And it wasn't always just it wasn't just one native people. You know, through, you know I, I just posted something on Facebook and I listed a whole bunch of periods in a row. And, and the last one I put is a semicolon. I said, all these dots represent native history. The dot on top of the last one. That's American history. We've been here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. our, our history is way, way longer than um, than American history. So, you know what? And although some of that history gets lost, not because oral tradition is a problem, but because Native people have been lost, because Native people have been killed, we've been murdered, we've been you know forced in uh, uh, assimilation in with residential schools, we've been removed from our territory. Most of our, a lot of our character that defines us is tied to our relationship to the land. So when you when you go through a removal period where you strip people away and then you jam them into an area that's not even their ancestral homelands, it changes things. So yeah. but we we do have history. And so in spite of winning some of these these battles over over mascot, our real work is education that has to go and you it goes beyond just the stripping away of a mascot. So you're right. I absolutely. think the work, the work absolutely continues. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of it too, you know, they, the, the school districts and, and pro, I don't know if it should come from the state school board or what, I know they keep saying, well, this is a local school district. You, you know what? You can mandate things. Um, how about uh, mandatory indigenous studies? You well, know, and, and it was, it it was one more. school that I went to. As far as I know, it's the only one that has mandatory indigenous studies here, and that's Thomas Worthington High School down around Columbus. Hmm. I taught five classes that day, me and my co-director. Well, and, and, and that and that is we the didn't problem. get a because, we didn't get compensation for for any of any of the work that we do. Because, because there, this whole idea of teaching to the test, they they minimize you know they, they minimize how much work they're going to put into into you know some of these subjects. But you know I think native history is is important, and it certainly should be offered as a as an uh, an elective even in, in in high school. So if you don't want to study you know other types of you know global studies, that let that be let that be an option, and and certainly. You know, if you've been a school that's used a native mascot, you you should step up and not not to keep your mascot. But look, you've taken an image for sometimes 50, 60, 100 years and you've given nothing back. Well, it's time to give back. And there are folks like you and me who are willing to go into a school and uh, and, and speak to a class full of kids. Yeah. So. And I've even done elementary school yeah. kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, third and fourth graders, sure. you know. Well, I mean, look, we got the whole Pocahontas and the Happy Little Pilgrim story that we got to debunk. We've got so we've got so much of the historical record that has to be corrected. So um, we so and you can do that, you know, um, with with age appropriate, uh, you know, uh, teaching. So uh, look, hey, I, I want to thank you so much for joining me here. This is it, it's been great to have you on the program. I'll have to have you you know, come back. Uh, um, I'm there's there's so many issues to talk about, and obviously. You know the mascot issue is just one of them, but you know, well, next time we'll we'll come in and we'll we'll talk about uh, you know some of the other uh, issues that we face and uh, yeah, like grave desecration here in Ohio. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, there, there's there's plenty of that going on. So yeah. All right, we'll 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 have you back. I want to thank you, uh, uh, Philip, for joining me. That's uh, it's uh, Philip Yenyo, who is the um, executive director of AIM Ohio. I want to thank you so much for uh, you know for giving me your time and and I want to thank you for the work that you've done out there. Thank you, and, and it's been an honor to come onto your show. Well, we'll 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 do it up. We'll do it up again. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, you know, look, this is the kind of work that that many Native people are involved in, and and I think it's important that people realize that uh, um, we are not one dimensional. You know, so anybody who tries to just suggest that that the mascot issue is not important. It is important because, you know, as Philip was saying, it reaches and it touches, it's connected to a lot of other issues. You have underlying problems. And if you have generations 
of, of, of kids going through high schools that are using these mascots. And then, then it's further enhanced by, you know, by the fanaticism that goes along with professional sports. The, you're creating an atmosphere that, um, that is always going to be dehumanizing to Native people. It can be objectifying to Native women. Uh, and it mischaracterizes, it teaches, it, it, it actually promotes this idea that we no longer exist, that we are mere relics of the past. So again, I want to thank uh, Philip for joining me. I don't want to thank you for listening. We'll, uh, we'll be back at it next time. So thanks. This is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. Yahweh.